After a wonderful two weeks in Cat Island, we pulled up anchor and sailed to Little San Salvador on our way to Eleuthera. Now Diana has something for dinner tonight because I'm eating lobster and Diana can't eat lobster. Okay. Little San Salvador is owned by the Holland American Cruise Line. It felt like an extreme juxtaposition to jump from the quaintness of Cat Island to this artificial plastic environment. There might be burglars. <laughs> Annie, I think we're about to get mugged. Cruisers have to ask for permission to land on the island and are allowed to walk on the beaches after the cruise ships have left. After a night in Little San Salvador, we continued to the southern tip of Eleuthera. The area is very exposed and the wind and water sculpted the rocks. Eleuthera refers to both a single island and a state in the Bahamas, which includes the smaller islands. Eleuthera forms part of the Great Bohemian Bank. It's 180 kilometers long and in places little more than 1.6 kilometers wide. Its eastern side faces the Atlantic Ocean and the western side faces the Great Bohemian Bank. The topography of the island varies from rolling pink sand beaches to large outcrops of ancient reefs. It's fun! <laughs> Our next stop was the protected anchorage of Rock Sound. This world-renowned blue hole, an inland ocean swimming hole, is located on the southern edge of Rock Sound. The combination of depth and lack of movement in the hole causes the water to have a freshwater lens on top of the heavier salt water. People often drink and bathe in its brackish water which is rumored to have healing powers. A seemingly bottomless natural limestone formation, it is said to have been explored by Jacques Cousteau. The ocean hole is filled with tropical fish that were caught and put there by local residents. Next we explored the boiling hole which bubbles with the tide. Unfortunately we missed this because we were not there at the right time. Behind the boiling hole is a cave called the Cathedral. The cave itself is fairly short, but the roots cascading down from the trees on top of the cave, along with the majestic rays of light that cast through the ceiling, create a breathtaking sight. The tree roots look like pillars holding up the ceiling.
it's April 5th. I followed some guy down a path through a cave and now I don't know where I am. We're a little bit lost and I've lost the others but I hear some voices. I hope they're human. Found Diana at least. We have an issue with our drive leg. It's leaking oil and now some water seems to have gotten into the uh, drive leg because the oil's consistency has become milky, which is concerning. And we just reached out to the drive leg manufacturer and actually they got back to us very quickly and said that it shouldn't cause damage in the short term as long as we keep it filled with oil, um, and the emulsifiers are working, which absorbs the, the water. Uh, we should be okay until we get back to the States. So, uh, so this is a huge load of our mind. Okay, it's a great day for solar cooking. So I'm gonna make brownies for tonight. And my goal is to try and videotape the brownies before they get eaten. Okay, Diane is making brownies for tonight. And my goal is to eat them before she gets to film them. <laughs> That night, we enjoyed our first inadvertent dinghy drift with some other cruisers. We are off on an adventure to increase our cruising permit. We get 90 days when we come in, and we've been in the beautiful Bahamas for 85 days. So um, we go to customs and they give us another 90. What did we just do? We just tacked. We're trying to get around the point here, but the angle is not in our favor, so we're zigzagging our way around. I'm not really sure why, but our gem seems to sail better upwind when the jib is a little bit reefed. Um, if any of you have any pointers, please bring them on. <laughs> we're still only getting like at best. Also, we move our traveler over to the windward side to try to sail more upwind. we're going 2.4 knots over land, but it mostly just feels like we're bobbing around. <laughs> Wind is 6 knots-ish, 5 to 6 knots, apparent and true. Where's the wind? <laughs> I really wish we had a spinnaker right now. <sighs> is that not the saddest sight? Ugh. Limp sails. Oh. I think maybe the wind gods heard me. Eight knots! <laughs> so we're anchored up in Governor's Harbor in Old Um This place is known for poor holding. And how many times did we try to set the anchor? At six. And you know, Greg is our windless, so it means that he pulled up the anchor six times in a row. So on our last try, you know, we're backing down on the anchor and we're about to give up and we get a really strong hook. So we're like, yay, we finally got it. Then our friend um, on Tanager has swam down on his anchor and he graciously offered to swim down on ours. And we find out that it's we hooked on a piece of cinder block or something <laughs> from a previous mooring ball. 
So we'll see. We should be good for tonight as long as the winds don't change and hopefully our anchor isn't fouled. <sighs> yeah, well, we just keep listening to our anchor alarms. Yeah. We set two. Yeah. Redundancy. Go cruising, they say. <laughs> It'll be easy, they say. The next day, we swam on the anchor to see its state. Apart from the anchor being hooked on a block of concrete, our chain was also laying across some electrical cables, over some coral, and somehow under some sponges. I manually reset the anchor by digging a hole and burying the tip in, and then we used the dinghy to back down on it. We're in Governor's Harbor and we are visiting the Haynes Library, which was established in 1897. That's supposed to be really nice, so we're excited to go. We're taking on water. And a... deliberately. <laughs> yes, we're deliberately taking on water. There's a free tap just up there. The, uh, we're not sure how good the water is, but um, we have a purifier, so worst comes to us. The next day we left Governor's Harbor and had a leisurely sail to Hatchet Bay. slow um, for our wind speed and point of sail. So unfortunately I think we need to scrub the bottom because we've lost about at least a knot and a half in speed, which means the bottom must be pretty gross. Do you think they're on a date? Uh -huh. 